Hello friend, welcome to our lecture. In today's class, we'll be talking about the radius. So the radius bone. The radius bone, first thing we need to know is introduction about the radius. First thing is introduction. Next is side determination. Side determination. Side determination. Then we talk about attachments of muscle. Attachments of muscle development of the bone and finally we we'll talk about clinical anatomy so this is basically what we'll be covering about the radius so the radius bone first i'm going to give you a sketch of what we'll be talking about for example if this is the humerus this will be your radius this will be a radius right so this will be a radius the next bone you are having is the ulna bone ulna bone yeah, right so if this is your radius bone this is your radius bone. First, let's start by introduction. Introduction, the radius. The radius is the long bone, which is located at the what? lateral aspect of the forearm, right? This is your humerus bone. This is your ulna, and this is the radius. So the radius is located at the what? at the lateral aspect of the hand. This side is the ulna is going into the middle aspect of your body why this side the radius going away so that is why it is called as lateral bone so the humerus is a long bone that's located at the lateral aspect of the forearm at the lateral aspect of the forearm of the forearm so that's a good introduction about the radius side determination the side determination of the humerus is simple the side determination of the humerus is simple the humerus has two end that's upper end upper end and the lower end this is the upper end of the humerus and this is the lower end of the humerus this is the upper end and this is the lower end so the upper end of the humerus is the point that is going to articulate with the capitulum of the what humerus the upper end of the radius is the one that is going to articulate with the capitulum of the humerus the capitulum of the humerus is located around it and this point is going to articulate with the capitulum here to form the humeral radial joints or the elbow joint okay next is the lower end the lower end presents the styloid process there's a, there's a projection coming out like this at the end of the radius. That end is called a styloid process. Styloid process. So the lower end presents the styloid process. So if you want to determine the side of the humerus, we will say that the upper end, the upper end of the humerus presents the head of the humerus. Present the head of the humerus. This is the head of the humerus, which articulates with the capitulum of the humerus the upper end of the radius sorry not humerus the upper end of the radius present the head of the radius which will articulate with the capitulum this is the capitulum of the humerus at the head of the radius articulate with with each day to form the elbow joint that's one side determination we can also see that the medial border of the radius bone the medial border of the radius bone is also called as the interosseous border the medial border is also called as well the interosseous border with this you have determined the side of this bone the lower end presents what the styloid process and also a notch which articulate with the word the on at the distal aspect this part is your distal aspect and this part is your proximal aspect right that's side determination. So the upper end presents the head of the human of the radius, head of the radius. Lower end presents the what? styloid process. Styloid process of the 
radius next important thing next important thing is let's know the bony landmarks few bony landmarks in the humor in the radius so few bony landmarks in the radius so few bony landmarks in the radius the bony landmarks in the upper end are this point called as the head of the radius the head of the what the radius the head of the radius is directed upward which articulate with the capitulum with the capitulum of the humerus so form the humeral radial joint which is also part of the elbow joint right then it also presents a tuberosity at this point just below the head of the humerus it presents a tuberosity this tuberosity is called as the radial tuberosity radial what tuberosity also called as the radial tuberosity this radial tuberosity is site of attachment of a muscle very important muscle right next it also presents a a notch here it is called as ulna notch it is called as what well, the radial notch of the ulna called as radial notch of the ulna radial notch of the ulna this is where the ulna is going to articulate with the radius to so form the proximal radio ulna joint to form the word proximal radio ulna joint proximal radio ulna joint from the proximal radio ulna joint next distally distally we have the stylo process which is the end lower end of the radius the lower end of the radius presents the stylo process stylo process right the lower end presents the styloid process then it also presents a tobacco there's a tobacco here which is going to articulate with the notch of the ulna which is called as what ulna notch of the radius it's called as ulna notch of the radius ulna notch of the radius then it also has a shaft the shaft is long and it presents border the shaft is long and presents what but at the shaft of the humerus the shaft of the radius not humerus sorry the shaft of the radius presents what h presents a border called as the anterior border the shaft presents a border called as the anterior border and the shaft is what is also long the shaft of the radius is long and also presents a border called as the anterior border so these are the landmarks first landmark first landmark we need to know is the head this point is the head of the radius next is the radial tuberosity site of attachment then we also have at the distal part distal part we have styloid process and we have a tobacco which is going to articulate with the ulna notch of the radius the ulna notch of the radius to form the distal from the distal radio ulna joint to form the distal radio ulna what joint so from this point we have draft three joint out we draft the elbow joints at this point elbow joint also draft the proximal radio ulna joint and then distal radio ulna joint proximal radio ulna distal radio ulna and what the part of the elbow joint so that is that that is that next important thing after knowing the landmarks let's also know the borders let's also know the borders and surface borders and surfaces present in the radius the radius has three borders and three surfaces the radius has three borders and three surfaces the borders are what and three border posterior border and media border that's anterior border, posterior border, and media border. The anterior border of the radius, the anterior border of the radius is also called as the oblique line, right? The anterior border is also called as the oblique line. The anterior border is going to begin obliquely from the radial tuberosity. is going to begin obliquely first at the proximal aspect, obliquely then it's going to 
turn vertically downward and terminate at the word siloid process. It's going to begin obliquely from the tuberosity. This point is the radial tuberosity. This is where the anterior border will begin obliquely. It will first run obliquely like this before it will go downward and terminate at the word siloid process. That is the anterior border. Then we have the medial border. The medial border is also called as well the interosseous border. The interosseous border. Medial border is also called as the interosseous border. So this interosseous border begins from the radial tuberosity as well. It also begins from the radial tuberosity and then terminate at the ulnar notch of the radius. We're going to terminate at the ulnar notch of the radius where the radius articulate with the ulnar to form a distal radio ulnar joint the distal radio ulnar joint okay next important thing is the posterior border the posterior border is located posteriorly the posterior border runs similar as the anterior border but the posterior border is going to terminate as as the dosal as the dosal tobacco of lista it's going to terminate as the dosal tobacco of what lista it's going to terminate as the dosal tobacco of lista so the posterior border and anterior border runs the same but the anterior border is terminating as the styloid process while the posterior border is terminating at the dosal tobacco of lista this is what is about the borders this is what is about the borders let's talk about the surfaces present the surfaces that is present in the radius the radius has three surfaces it has three borders we have completed it by saying that the borders are anterior border media or interosseous border and then posterior border now the surfaces are anterior surface as and true surface, that's posterior surface, and true surface, posterior surface, and what is called as lateral surface. And true surface, posterior surface, and lateral surface present in the radius. So those are the surfaces that are present in the radius. And true surface, posterior surface at the back, and lateral surface, which is located away from the midline of the body. Next important thing is attachments of muscle. Attachments of muscle to the radius. Attachments of muscle to the radius bone. So the muscle, muscle are attached to the radius bone, both posteriorly, anteriorly, and then even medially. So on the lateral aspect and anteriorly. The first muscle attaching to the posma aspect is called as the supinator muscle. Supinator muscle is going to get attached here and the lateral aspect. The supinator muscle get attached here at the lateral and anterior aspect of the upper part of the humerus. So this is called as supinator muscle. Supinator gets inserted at this point. Next muscle in the radius is the pronator teres is going to get inserted at the middle aspect of the shafts of the radius middle aspect after the supinator next insertion is pronator teres the pronator or teres muscle pronator teres muscle the pronator teres muscle the pronator teres muscle is going to get inserted and lastly you have the brachioradialis muscle so this last one is called as brachioradialis muscle Brachioradialis muscle. <laughs> anteriorly, anteriorly on the shaft, anteriorly represents the muscle called as flexor digitorium superficialis. Flexor digitorium superficialis is getting origin from this point, and also another muscle called as flexor digitorium profundus. Flexor digitorium profundus. Flexor digitorium superficialis, flexor digitorium profundus are getting origin on the anterior surface of the radius the posterior surface give rise to abductor give rise to abductor policies longus abductor policies longus muscle and what extensor policies previs 
So these are the muscles arising from the radius. These are the muscles arising from the radius bone. Okay. So let's talk about the capsule. The capsule are what is going to protect the what the joint species. The capsule is going to protect the joint space. So let's see at this point this margin of the head of the radius the margin of the head of the radius is going to give attachment to the capsule the joint capsule of the elbow this margin is going to give attachment to the joint capsule of the elbow right so this is site of attachment and then the radial tuberosity the radial tuberosity is where the brick biceps brachii muscle radial tuberosity is biceps Biceps brachii muscle gets inserted. Biceps brachii muscle gets inserted at the radial tuberosity. Having knowing that, let us discuss about the development of the radius. Development of the radius. The radius developed from what? From the fourth week. From the fourth week of intrauterine life. Developed from the fourth week of intrauterine life. And it developed from one primary center and what secondary centers. One primary center and secondary center. Primary center developed at fourth week, and the secondary center developed and fuses at 28 years. Right. Primary center developed at fourth week, while the secondary center developed and fuses from 28 years, which is from 15 years up to 28 years. This is what is known as the development of the radius bone now we are going to talk about the clinical anatomy of what is called as the radius clinical anatomy clinically the radius has sites of fraction especially at the styloid process at the styloid process the radius has what points of fraction so if this point is the styloid process and there is a fracture here it is called as styloid fraction. It's called as what? Styloid fraction. So this styloid fracture, when this fracture occurs, the styloid process which is being displaced might displace anteriorly or posteriorly. This styloid process which is being fractured out of the main bone might displace anteriorly or posteriorly. If the displacement is anteriorly, then it is called as Cooley's fracture. If the displacement is anteriorly, it is called as Cooley's fraction. But if the displacement is posteriorly, it is called as Smith fraction. It is called as Smith fraction. So this is what is about the clinical anatomy of the clavicle. There is also what is called as mid-long, mid-long deformity, mid-long deformity. All right, all these are clinical anatomy associated with the radius bone.